good to be back and I just want to give a big thank you to all the ones who stepped up you know this last week and filled in they did a great job you know big John we threw him right into the fire and <laughs> he like taught like how many times in a row like four times he'd never done that before <laughs> that's, that's what you call getting thrown into the fire Stephen Root did a great job and the worship team and Tamara and Amber and Eduardo and all the Kept everything going. And, uh, and I believe the best is yet to come. I know I was excited to get back this morning. Excited to worship. I'm excited that this thing that we've been going through, I believe, is turning a corner and it won't be long until we'll all be able to get back together and to worship. And, but I think it's been good for us because I think, you know, sometimes we don't realize what we have until we don't have it. And then and when we can't come together, and we, you know, can't, you know, share the love of God like we're accustomed to. And then it gives you a little feel of what it might be like in, in, a, in a communist country in China where they can't even do what we're doing right now without fear of being arrested and, you know, whatever. So we got a lot to be thankful for, but it's good to be back. And, you know, uh, not only are we going to get through this, we're going to come out stronger because of it. Amen. In Jesus' name. But we're going to worship for a little while. We're going to get into the Word. And I believe that God's got something that I can use to encourage you today. To put on my heart. So, but Lord, we just come into your presence. We thank you, Father, for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, that your grace is always sufficient. You said you'd never give us more than we could handle, Lord. But with every temptation, you will always, always, always provide a way of escape. We thank you for that, Lord God. We just thank you, Lord, that uh, even though things have been different, you've never changed, Lord God. And even though I don't believe you caused this coronavirus, I do believe you're using it for good, for the glory of God, to build your kingdom, to change our perspective on the church. Instead of come, 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 it's go, 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 go. to the Father's house this morning. One of my favorite scriptures I almost start out every day with is, Lord, I come boldly. Father, I come boldly to your house, to the throne room of grace, that I might receive grace and mercy to help in the time of need. We come right into your arms, Father. We run into your arms this morning because of the blood of Jesus Christ. We're robed in righteousness, Lord God. You put a robe on us. You put a ring on our fingers. You put sandals on our feet. Hallelujah. We just thank you for that. And we run into your arms. Sometimes on this journey, I get lost in my mistakes. What looks to me like weakness is a canvas for your grace. The story isn't over. The story's just begun. Failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does. Yeah, failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does. Ooh, lay your burdens down. Ooh, here in the father's house, we'll check your shame. Check 
them treat him like Barabbas so he can treat Barabbas like him. That's powerful. We were Barabbas, you guys. And he let us go free. And he got treated like Barabbas so we could be treated like Jesus. Wow. What kind of love is that? Thank you, Lord. I've carried a burden too long on my own. I wasn't created to bear it long. I hear your invitation to let it all go. And I see it now, I'm laying it down. And I know that I need you So I run to the Father I fall into grace I'm done with the hiding No reason to wait My heart needs a surgeon My soul needs a friend So I run to the Father again And again and again and again Oh saw my condition had a plan from the start your son for redemption the price for my heart and I don't know the context for that kind of love I don't understand I can't comprehend all I know is I need you. So I run to the Father, I fall into grace. I'm done with the hiding, no reason to wait. My heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend. So I run to the Father again and again and again and again. Again and again, oh, 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 my heart has been in your 
the sights long before my first breath running into your arms is running to life from death and I feel this rush deep in my chest your mercy is calling out and just as I am God you pull me in and I know that I So I run to the Father, I fall into grace I'm done with the hiding, no reason to wait My heart's found a surgeon, my soul's found a friend So I run to the Father again and again and again and again Oh has been in your sights long before my first breath running into your arms is running to life from death oh I feel this rush deep in my chest your mercy is calling out so just as I am Lord you pour me in and I know that I need you. Come on, if you're out there, just run into his arms this morning, on a Tuesday morning. So I run to my Father, I fall into grace. I'm done with the hiding, no reason to wait. My heart's found a surgeon, my soul's found a friend. So I run to the Father again and again and again. Run. Oh, 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 again and again. Oh, 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 again and again. Father, we just run into your arms this morning. amazing. You're an awesome God. We just come and fall at your feet right now. And we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Come on, you guys. He's our Father. <laughs> We're brothers and sisters. Our Father, our Father, our Father, our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be your name, hallowed be your name, our Father, our Father, our Father. Hallowed be your name, hallowed be your name, our Father, our Father. Out in heaven, hallowed be your name, hallowed be your name, hallowed be your name, no other name, hallowed be your name, hallowed be your name. run to my father I fall into grace I'm done with the hiding no reason to wait my heart found a surgeon my soul's found a friend so I run to the father again and again and again and again oh want to sit here at your feet 
I'm caught up in this holy moment I never want to leave This is where we belong, amen And I'm not here for blessing And Jesus, you don't owe me And more than anything that you can do, I just want you. Lord, I'm sorry when I've just gone through the motions. I'm sorry when I just sang another song. So take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you Lord, I'm sorry When I've come with my agenda I'm sorry When I forgot that you're enough So take me back to where we started I open up my heart to you caught up in your presence and I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment and I never want to leave Lord I'm not here for blessing Jesus, you don't owe me anything And more than anything that you can do I just want you I just want you And nothing else No, nothing else But nothing else would do I just want you and nothing else, no, nothing else, Lord, nothing else would do. I just want you, Lord, nothing else, no, nothing else, no, nothing else would do. I just want you and nothing else. No, nothing else, Lord, nothing else would do. I just want you, Lord, nothing else. No, nothing else, nothing else would do. I'm caught up in your presence. But I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment And I never want to leave And I'm not here for a blessing And Jesus, you don't know More than anything that you can do, I just want you. That's what it all boils down to, amen. More than anything that you can do, I just want you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah worship you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Dearest Father, closest friend, most beautiful, most beautiful. Dearest Father, 
closest friend, most beautiful, most beautiful. One thing I desire, and only this I seek, just to dwell, dwell, dwell here forever. This will be my posture, laying at your feet. Just to dwell, dwell, dwell here forever. Dearest Father, closest friend, most beautiful, most beautiful. Dearest Father, closest friend, most beautiful. Most beautiful, the one thing I desire, and only this I seek, just to dwell, dwell, dwell here forever, and this will be my posture, laying at your feet, just to dwell, dwell. There are no words, there's nothing left, our love sings to you, sing oh, oh, oh. no there are no words, Lord there's nothing left, my love sings to you, sing into his eyes. Now someday we're going to do it for real, for real, for real. But right now we just got to use our imagination. But just close your eyes and look into the eyes of Jesus. And when you look into his eyes, you're looking into the eyes of the Father because they're one. And Jesus said, if you see me, if you see my eyes, you see the eyes of the Father. It's a beautiful thing, guys. I always thought it was turn or burn, hellfire, brimstone, judgment. He's got to be mad at me. But I was wrong. Amen? It's the look of love. It's the look of love. And he's like saying, come on, get up. Some of you out there need to hear that. Don't give up. Get up. In Jesus' name, amen? He loves you. Amen? You are forgiven by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why he died for you. He knew that we would have struggles. He knew that we would have difficulties. He knew that we would make mistakes. Amen? With just one look, 
everything changes I'm captivated and I'll never be the same with just one look everything changes and I'm captivated and I'll never be the same the Calvary Lord you looked at me Calvary, you looked down at me. Calvary, you looked at me with just one look. Hallelujah. And Peter denied the Lord three times. Totally blew it, said, I'll never do that, and he did it. And the rooster crowed, and he looked up, and the Bible says Jesus was standing right there looking at him. One of the greatest failures of his life. And, G and Peter looked up into the eyes of Jesus, and I believe with all of my heart, it wasn't the look of judgment or condemnation. It was the look of love. And he said, get up, Peter. Now go feed my sheep. Get up. Bible says he went out and wept bitterly. See what God's after, a broken and a contrite heart. That's where he does his best work, amen? When we realize, hey, without him, we're nothing, you guys. Without him, we can do nothing. But by his grace, we can do anything, amen? So I just, somebody out there needs to hear, get up. Don't give up, get up. In Jesus' name, amen? Don't give up, get up. Where are you going to go? Only he has the words that lead to eternal life. Hallelujah. So I give you all my worship. Lord, I give you all my worship. I give you all my worship, Lord, for you alone are God. I give you all my worship. Come on, everything you got. Give you all my worship, Lord. I give you all my worship for you alone, God. And at your feet I bow down. At your feet we bow down. Lord, at your feet, Lord, we worship you now. At your feet, we worship you. Your name is sweet like honey. Your voice, it sounds like the waters. Your eyes are full of fire, fairer than the sons of men. Your name is pure and holy, and there is none beside thee. I will stay here for a little while until I look like the one I behold. And I will pour out my vial till all of me is on the floor. And at your feet we worship you but at your feet we worship you your name is sweet like honey your voice sounds like the waters your eyes are full of fire fairer than the sons of men your name is pure and holy for there is none beside you Inside you, Lord of Lords, King of Kings. So on a Tuesday morning, Lord, we give you all our worship. I give you all my worship, Lord. I give you all my worship for you alone, God. I give you all my worship. 
chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10 and uh, verse number 30. And it's been a while. Like I said, I want to once again. I want to thank everybody for uh, filling in while I was gone, and and Steve and Ruth and the technical people have just done a wonderful job. And, and uh, trying to put this thing back on. And uh, you know, sometimes being away makes your heart grow fonder. You know, and and. Getting back here this morning was really, I miss this. I really miss it a lot. And, uh, you know, and, and I know uh, that's why we're people got to realize that sometimes it takes a while. And for me, it's taken way too long. I wish I'd have 
you know, and I've still got a long ways to go. But, but maturity is when you get to the place where you no longer give yourself options you used to give yourself. Does that make sense? See, growing up is when you, and usually you had to get there mostly through trial and error. And like I tell people, I've learned much more by my mistakes often, which I know that sounds crazy. But how many know that's kind of how life works is like uh, we learn from our failures. And I don't think that uh, that takes our God by surprise. That's why Jesus came and died, because he knew that we couldn't do that, you know, in our own strength. So he came and did what we couldn't do. But as we walk through this process, how many of you know, he, he has empowered us. He has given us grace and his Holy Spirit to become more like him. And so the longer that we live, how many think we should improve, we should grow, we should do better. And we should be more like Jesus this week than we were last week. Amen? That doesn't mean we've arrived. Like, like I always tell people, I learned it from my teacher, Andrew, I haven't arrived. Jamie knows this one, but, but I've left. And some of us left earlier than others, and some of you are just just start your journey out, you know, and, and you're just getting started, which is beautiful. That's a beautiful thing. You're on the, you're on the path that leads to life now. And, uh, you know, oh, yeah, I was going to, like, I know, uh, I know that uh, I was going to talk a couple little quick things in Proverbs here today. I don't know why my thing's not coming up here. I want to see who all's on here. Okay, I know Kelly's watching and Mondo's watching. I don't know if anybody else is watching, but anyway, it's good to have all of you out there that are watching. But in Proverbs, uh, let me get over there real quick. Proverbs 28.1, on the 28th of every month I talk about this. But the very first verse is one of my favorite verses, and especially in the ministry of Hannah's house. And But you know, if you've ever been involved in drugs or any kind of, even alcohol or anything like that, this, this verse can really hit home. Because it's, it's such a true verse. It's such a powerful, powerful verse. But in, and this is the Message Bible. And this is not my uh, message today. But I just want to touch on a couple of verses here. Because this is, this is so powerful. It's, verse number one, it says, The wicked are edgy with guilt, ready to run off. Listen, even when no one's after them. Anybody relate to that? <laughs> Somebody's always after you. And you're always... And see, to me, when you're living the evil life or just not living right, you always have to look over your shoulder, don't you? And, and you're always, like, living in fear and worry and stress. And somebody knocks on the door and it's panic. And some, the phone rings and it's panic. And, you know, just all kinds of things. So, you know, what a horrible way to live. And it's like, it's, like, it's, like, it's just, you know, and, and even when nobody's even pursuing, you're still fleeing. I mean, that's messed up. There's nobody after you, and you're still on the run. And how many know after a while, you've got to get sick and tired of that? You've got to get sick and tired of being sick and tired and always running, even when no one's pursuing, always thinking somebody's out to get you. Somebody's not always out to get you, except maybe the devil. He's always out to get you. But it says, but so the, the wicked flee when no one's even pursuing. And, and I... You know, 40-some years ago, I was, I was that person, just like some of you listening right now are that person. And, and it, but then it goes on to say the second part of the verse, which is just as powerful, honest people. In other words, those that, that aren't perfect, but they're just real. How many know when you're real and you're genuine and you're honest and you just, you just tell the truth, those people are relaxed and confident. How many know one of the first things you lose when you go down that wicked path is your confidence and your peace? You're not relaxed anymore. Now you're a basket case. Now you're all stressed and anxiety and worry and fear. My phone won't stay on. And to me, you know, and after a while, you know, you get sick and tired of, of, of doing the first part of the verse. And you got to fall in love with the second part of the verse. And to the point where you don't want to leave the second part of the verse because the first part stinks. Does that make sense? You know, because it's like honest people are relaxed. Take a deep breath. Whew. I don't, I'm not worried about what's in my trunk anymore. I'm not worried about what's in the glove box. Here's the keys. Check it out. <laughs> you know, and how many know like you can be relaxed? Then there's a confidence. There's a boldness. See, the first thing that sin will do will rob you of your confidence and your boldness. And you don't even want to pray for anybody. You don't want to, 
You know, you know, you just lose. And, and you know, but but the righteous are as bold as a lion. Amen. And so we need some. This is a time we need some bold, confident children of God. And you can't have both. Now He'll still love you and He'll forgive you and you'll still go to heaven. But you may live like hell until you get there. And, and see, that's not what God's best is for you. Okay? There's one other verse, but my phone won't stay on. I need to be, figure out how to fix that. But that's okay. I want, now scroll on down. You can't scroll or look on down to uh, uh, verse number 19. And I love this verse. This is the, I love the Message Bible. You know, and by the way, we're kind of in the middle of a crisis, but I, I, while I was on vacation, one of the verses a couple, three or four days ago was, if you fall apart in the day of crisis, there wasn't much to you to begin with. Yeah, and so, but here's this verse. I love this verse, especially, you know, here at Hannah's house. But we're all, how, many know we, how many know our heart is like a garden? Our mind is like a garden. You can sow seeds in this garden. Good seeds or bad seeds. And let me just tell you, your imagination is like a garden. If you want to grow a good crop, you've got to plant good seed. You know, don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that's what he's going to reap. If you sow to the flesh, you shall of the flesh reap corruption. And we've all done that. Amen? But if you sow to the Spirit, you shall of the Spirit reap life and peace. See what kind of crop you want, but see how many of you got to work your garden. And so it says here, it says, work your garden. My phone keeps going off. Work your garden, and you'll end up with plenty of food. And food represents fruit. How many want to bring forth? Herein is the Father glorified that we bring forth much fruit. Well, if you're going to bring forth much fruit, you and the Holy Spirit are going to have to partner up. And work your garden. You're going to have to pull some weeds. You're going to have to work some soil. You're going to have to get some rocks out. You're going to have to break up the hard places. I remember Jesus talked about the parable. How many of you got all that kind of soil in your garden? There's places in your life where you've been trampled on, and it's gotten hard. Let me know what I'm talking about. You've been hurt. The infection from rejection. Some of you know what it's like to be rejected Maybe it was a parent. Maybe it was a dad. Maybe it was a mom. Where were you? Why did you leave me? Dad, where are you at? Why didn't you want me? So you can't grow up without a dad and not get your heart hardened. You can't go through stuff like that. See, you gotta, so you got to work your garden. Work your soil. Holy Spirit will help you work your soil. Work your garden. There will be plenty of food. But <laughs> it says play and party, which around here is kind of what we deal with, and what's going to happen. You guys don't know because you play and party, and you'll end up with an empty plate. And when I think about, when I think about what we go through here at Hannah's house, and I think about an empty plate, how many here have empty, is that play and party? You'll end up with an empty plate. And how many know like relapse, all that kind of stuff? Where do you always end up? Empty plate. Unfruitful, barren, desert, ruined. Anybody ever feel like you were ruined? And, and you, be, you know, guess what? Your garden turns into a weed patch. Anybody ever feel like you were just a big weed patch? <laughs> yeah, and, and, and literally, so you got to work your garden. So you can't do nothing and expect something to happen. You have to team up with the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, and let that just work in you to, to pull up some weeds and get some of those big rocks that got put in there and, and, and break up some of that hard ground. And next thing you know, you know you're going to have you're going to have love and joy and peace and kindness and gentleness and faithfulness and self-control. The fruit of the Spirit. But man, when you make that decision to go play and party, there's another verse that says that when you forsake the law of the Lord, you're free to embrace depravity. See, a lot of people just want to run from God. But when you do that, you're going to end up with an empty plate. And you're, you're going to end up like a weed patch. And you know, and, and this is not my sermon, but the one thing that I, I, one of my favorite verses is in Ezekiel 36. And it says, he will take your weed patch 
and turn it into the Garden of Eden. But you're going to have to work your garden. You're going to have to team up, let Holy Spirit say, Holy Spirit, what, what we got to work on in the garden today. He said, you need to get that stinking thinking. You need to get that bad attitude. Or whatever it is, you know what it is. You know what it is. And he may have to help take you on a journey to show you where you've really been hardened. So you can go to heaven and still have a hard heart in areas of your heart. You can go to heaven and not be fully healed on the inside. I think Moses never got healed. He still had anger issues. Amen? But we know he went to heaven. But he had anger issues. last thing he did was strike the rock. He was so upset, so angry. And we've all got stuff. So we have to team up with the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, and go to work on us garden. And don't be deceived. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. If you sow to the flesh, you're going to reap corruption. If you sow to the Spirit, you're going to reap life and peace. That word life there is zoe, back to the garden. Life the way God originally intended it to be. Z-O-E. Z-O-E. So anyway, that was just Proverbs. But how many of us? Some good stuff. Amen. And to me, I see it here in this ministry so many times. I, I just see meth take everything people have. I mean, you talk about an empty plate. It's empty. I mean, they got nothing. Take your plate, too. Take your underwear and your socks. <laughs> one of the first things we have to do a lot around here is buy underwear and socks. I'm like, that's an empty plate right there. <laughs> that's an empty plate. And so, you know, but that's what sin will do. It, it, and, and the flesh is never satisfied. The flesh is never satisfied. It, and so, but today I feel like there's one verse that God put on my heart. We have a few minutes left. And we've been talking about a, a lot about focus, focus, focus. And I know I've been gone for a few days, but but I'm telling you, failure is simply broken focus. And the devil is a, is a master at breaking your focus, right? And, 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 and I mean, you have, to, you have to discipline your thoughts. And, I, and let me just say this. I thought about this this morning. Discipline is remembering what you want the most. That was really good. I don't even know who said that. I didn't say it originally, but I don't remember who said it. Now it's mine, I guess. But <laughs> I'm going to say it again. Think about this. Discipline is remembering what you really want. So like this morning, I've been on vacation. I've been eating too much. And so I'm back in the saddle. And so I went to get on the elliptical, which I've done a few times over vacation. But I worked hard out in the yard, and I'm sore all over. And I got on the elliptical thingy exercise, little bike thing today, and I wasn't feeling it at all. I mean, I did not want to be on this thing, but I kept thinking, you know, discipline is remembering what you want. I want to be healthy. Amen? I don't want to have to worry about, you know, not making it strong to the end. And so, man, I'm just like going, I'm going, I'm going, because discipline is remembering what you want the most. What do you really want in your life? See, that'll give you the desire to discipline yourself to say, I ain't doing that other crazy stuff anymore. Amen? I'm tired of running when nobody's pursuing. I want to be bold and confident in the Lord. And this is some powerful, powerful scriptures here, and I'm not going to have time to do it justice, but starting with verse number, actually I said 30, but we're going to start with verse 32. Hebrews chapter 10. And by the way, this is leading up to the heroes of faith chapter. This is really... The same context as the heroes of faith, chapter 12. Stephen Ruth, you talked about this in Hebrews 12. I spent a lot of time on chapter 11 the last few weeks, you know, and this is, this is all part of that. I mean, literally, we're talking verses away from chapter 11 here. And what he's trying to do is encourage the Hebrews, the people, not to give up, not to lose their faith, not to go back, so to speak, to Egypt, go back to the old ways. And, and what he says here, because things can get tough. How I many know things can get tough? And things got tough. That's why he wrote the book of Hebrews. He wrote the book of Hebrews because things were getting tough for the people of God, and they were being tempted to go back to their old ways. So Paul wrote Hebrews, and then he said, verse 32, But recall 
the former days, okay, in which after you were illuminated. So focus. After God changed your focus. After God opened your eyes to see things you didn't see before. After God revealed to you who he was and that there is a kingdom that is more real than this physical kingdom. See, the illumination is the light coming on. How many when you turn on the lights, the lights illuminate the room? And see, you shall know the truth. You shall be illuminated and the truth will set you free. And see, so you got to remember the former days. Remember the days when the light came on and your faith was overflowing and you were going to do this thing. And now all of a sudden it's got hard and it's, it's kind of like the light's starting to try to dim out a little bit on you. And he says, wait a minute. Remember the former days. Come on, remember why you're here in the first place. What do you want more than anything else? And all of a sudden, the lights can seem to be going down a little bit. But So he says, but wait a minute. Recall the former days when the light came on and your heart was changed and you were translated out of darkness into the light. Recall the former days in which after you were illuminated, everybody say you endured. See, what causes us to endure? Illumination. Because you see something other people don't see. Does that make sense? See, people who have been illuminated, they're going to endure things other people aren't going to endure. See, Jesus, for the joy set before him. He was illuminated to 2020 on April 28th, on a Tuesday morning, to the fact that because of what he was getting ready to do on the cross, People like you and me could go free and have a relationship with him. So the illumination allowed him to endure a great hardness of the cross, didn't it? What's going to allow us to endure is we got a vision. We've, we got something. We're focused, aren't we? We're illuminated. We got stuff to do. We got an appointment with destiny. Just like Jesus had an appointment with destiny. See, you have an appointment with destiny. See, people are depressed right now. People, people are, are, are oppressed and depressed and discouraged. And, and literally, uh, there's all kinds of suicide. The suicide rate is going high, straight up. Alcohol sales are up 240%. In the last month. And, 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 and here's the cure, in my opinion, to depression and oppression. And it's purpose. It's destiny. Come on, you got stuff to do. You, you can't waste another day letting depression have its way. Just come on, you got to not give up, but you need to get up. God says, I know the plans I have for you, plans of good and not of evil to give you hope and a future. So after you were illuminated, you endured. See, right now, we're, I don't know about you, but this thing, this thing drive, this about drive anybody crazy if you let it. And I just feel like the enemy's loving the fact that even though it's going to backfire on him, that he's, um, I mean, I think about Hannah's house. And I think about what this has done to Hannah's house and, and how it's been an endurance, to say the least. And, but you endured a great struggle with sufferings. And, and, and the word endure there is a really interesting word. But see, I go back to, to what, what causes you, what's going to cause you, what's going to cause you out there to get through this, to endure this. Is your illumination. You got to see something. You got to see it. You got to have a vision. You got to have a dream. You got to realize you have an appointment with destiny. I have an appointment with destiny. And let me tell you, I believe that there is going to be a great awakening coming in after on the heels of this. I believe the church is not going to be the same. And I don't even know for sure what that means. We were praying this morning that God show us the new church that is that is coming, going to rise up out of this thing we're going through. Amen? Because I don't know exactly what it's going to look, but I, 
You know, and there's some things I want to get back to normal, okay? But there's a whole lot of things that normal is not what we want to get back to because normal wasn't working. And what's, God, what's going to be this new thing that you're getting ready to do in the church? And so, but the word endure here is a, is a really powerful word, and it means to be constant. And how many know during this time, see, this is a time for people either going to fall apart. Like I said, if you fall apart in the day of crisis, there wasn't much to you to begin with. See, where are the Christians that are rising to the top during this time? Say, listen, we're not a basket case. We're not falling apart. We know our God's got everything fully in control and that not only are things going to be okay, they're going to be better than before. We're going to be stronger than before. I believe that. And so, but it means to be constant, to persevere, to be continuance. It means bearing up. And I know you got to do some bearing up right now. Bearing up under the pressure, bearing up under these crazy conditions where, you know, it's just like crazy right now. And people are hurting. See, people, aren't, people are, are, are not wondering how they're going to pay their bills, how they're going to put food on the table. Now, a lot of people aren't, but a lot of people are. And so, so it means to I mean bearing up steadfastness. How about this holding out? You know, sometimes you just got to hold out. You know, it seems like, hey, is this ever going to end? Yes, this too shall pass. And you got to hold on. You got to hold out. You got to bear up is what this means. Uh, the word combines under and to bear up under the pressure of something. It, it, capacity to continue to bear up under difficult circumstances. I love this. Not with a passive complacency. And what does it mean to be passive? Well, whatever, whatever happens will happen. You know, we'll just... Come on, we'll just take an extended vacation here, and whatever happens, happens. And, you know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, just kind of indifferent, apathy. So, but that's not what this is. This is to bear up under difficult circumstances, not with passive complacency. See, some people think being patient is just waiting till it passes. No, that's not what patience is all about. Patience is actually the word endurance. James says, Count it all joy, brothers and sisters, when you have various trials, knowing that the trying of your faith produces patience. That's the very same word right here. Exactly the same. It's the word endurance. See, when you go through some stuff, then you can go through some stuff. That makes sense? Who are the ones that best get through stuff? People who've been through stuff. Because why? When you go through circumstances, it causes you to grow up and mature. And then when something else comes along, you don't fall apart. Because you've already been through some stuff. You've been through some fire. You've been through the storms. You've been through some water. And you kept the faith. Well, see, that's what this is all about. You endured. You didn't give up. Why? Because you've been illuminated. See, we're living for something that a lot of people can't even see. And that's why I say, blessed are your eyes if they've been illuminated. But I know we're just about out of time, but, but it says so it means bearing up under difficult circumstances, not with passive complacency, but with a hopeful fortitude, actively. See, not passively, but actively. In other words, you got to do something. You can't do nothing and expect something to happen. That makes sense. See, if you if you want to if you if you want something to change, you got to change. You can't do nothing and expect something to happen. See, he's not talking about just, well, just sit and twiddle your thumbs till this blows over. No, it's actively resisting weariness and defeat. Actively resisting. See, resist the devil and he will flee from you. See, there's action involved here, okay? And then, I know we're just about out of time. So, see, but to me, it goes back to focus, focus, focus. What's going to get us through this? Focus. What's going to get you to the end? Focus. See, there's, there's, there's a goal. Paul says, I press towards the prize of the goal. He's got his eyes on the finish line. I mean, you know, like, like the older you get, the closer the finish line gets. And it's like, whoa, it's time to get with the program around here. Amen. Because our vapor's going pretty fast. But see, focus, illumin. I see the end line. I see the finish line. I see myself standing before Jesus. Like I said last Sunday, 
I see myself rubbing elbows with James and Peter and Paul. Stephen, who was martyred, rubbing our shoulders and elbows with great men and women of God who just one chapter over went through all kinds of endurance but kept the faith to the very end. Amen? And that's where we're headed. And see, that's an illumination, isn't it? Do you see that? Do you see this thing is real? This life is but a vapor. It appears for a moment, boom, and it's gone. You get one chance. But see, man, if you've been illuminated, you start living for a city whose maker is God. You start living for that day, not this life, but knowing that there's a life that's coming, an eternal life that is more real than this physical world that we're in right now. Amen? And, and I'm probably going to stop right there here, but we might read just a little further, and then I know I get to teach. This is the one day I get to teach twice, so I get to come back at one, and we'll finish this up because this is some really, really good stuff. But, but let's just start with verse 32, and we'll read down through here. But recall the former days in which after you were illuminated, and, you know, to me, uh, to me it's just basically enlightened, you endured a great struggle with sufferings, partly while you were made a spectacle, both by reproaches and tribulations, and partly while you became uh, com companions of those who were so treated. For you had compassion on me and my chains and joyfully accepted the plundering of your goods, knowing that you have a better and an enduring possession for yourselves in heaven. There's the illumination. There's the focus. So not this life, but the life that's coming. And, and to me, that's got to become more real to us than the, the world we're living in right now. And that's what allowed them to endure, the great hardness. Is they, they, they were like all these people in chapter 11, like Abraham. Abraham was looking for a city whose maker was God. A city coming down from heaven. Amen? And, and so that's the kind of illumination that we have to have. And then we'll pick up there uh, this afternoon in verse 35, where it says, Therefore, because of this, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. For you have need of, here we go again, endurance. So that after, listen, not before, so that after you have done the will of God. See, you still have to do the will of God. But after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. And to me, more than anything else, the will of God is to keep the faith. To keep the faith. To keep the faith. Amen? Because when you go on to chapter 11, what, what got these guys, how they land in the heroes of faith? Was it because they were perfect? Was it because they never made mistakes? No. Was it because they had it all together? No. But it was because they kept the faith to the very end. They never quit. They never gave up. They never caved. See, don't grow weary in well-doing and doing the right thing, doing the will of God. For in due season, and how many know even through this coronavirus, there's a due season on the way. For in due season, you shall reap if you faint not. And the word faint there means cave in, quit, or give up. And here's what I say. Don't give up, get up. Don't give up, get up. Because you got stuff to do. See, you got to be illuminated. God's got a plan. God's got a purpose. You know, eternal life is real. This life is but a vapor. It is it appointed unto man and woman once to die? And after that, you guys, is the judgment. And we're not going to be judged for our sins because I believe that's under the blood. Amen? I believe our sins are taken out of the way. But we are going to give an account of what we did with our gifts and our talents and our life and our little vapor here that we had on the earth. And when it's over, it's over. You don't get a do-over. You don't get to come back. There's not reincarnation. Sorry to disappoint some of you. But there is no reincarnation. You don't get to come back and try again. 
That's why, like, to me, this, this is what it's all about. See, you got the wisdom is, teach me, O Lord, to number my days. Why? That I may gain a heart of wisdom. Why would that give you a heart of wisdom? Because you realize, man, I got so much time to fulfill my purpose and destiny on this earth, to find out my true identity in Christ. And so I just, if your identity is from him, which it is, it can only be found in him. If your purpose is from him, it can only be found in him. So the first step is you got to get in him all the way and serve him with all of your heart and realize our days are numbered. Our days are numbered. Amen. So, so anyway, we'll pick up there uh, this afternoon. But I just want to encourage some of you up there, out there that, you know, if you've been depressed, discouraged, I just pray that God will just come right now. The Holy Spirit could come right now and just bring an illumination. And, and so, Holy Spirit, we ask you to come right now and that you would open up our eyes. Open up our eyes. After you were illuminated, you endured a great hardness. Help us to see, Lord, the future. Help us to see what lies ahead. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear. Hear, Lord God. Illuminate, 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 Holy Spirit. Anoint our eyes right now that we would have a dream, we would have a vision. Discipline is remembering what we want the most. Thank you, Lord. My people perish for a lack of a vision, Lord God, where there is no vision, where there is no dream, where there is no illumination, the people perish. So, Lord, give us vision, give us dreams, give us illumination that we can see the invisible world more real, more clearly than we see this flesh-and-blown world that we live in. So, Holy Spirit, do what only you can do. Encourage people out there. Encourage people to get up, get up. Don't give up, but get up. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Once again, it's good to be back. And, and I guess it's Tuesday. So this, today at one, we will be having one more chapel. And then the rest of the week, we'll only be doing at nine in the morning at 9 a.m. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So uh, if you got nothing going on at one o'clock, we'll be right back here. So you have a great day. We'll see you back here in a little while.